I've got a project coming up that's going to require a dividing head. The smart thing to do would probably be to buy one of those import ones that gets pretty good marks. But instead, I bought the crustiest one I could find on eBay. The initial assessment is this thing's pretty sticky feeling. This is a 6.5 inch Ellis dividing head. They made these things for a pretty long time. It's hard to tell exactly when this one's from. I'm thinking it's probably about 1960. Most of the rust removal on this is stuff that I can do with just a wire wheel and some scotch bright. Before I do that, I want to do a little checkup and see how flat things are and how they're fitting together. That's hinging pretty badly. It should be hinging sort of a third of the way in. It's got a little bit of blue there and a very small point right there. Looks like there's probably a burr there from getting dropped or something. I'm going to do a little bit of work on this with the hand scraper, see if it gets better. And so that escalated quickly. I'm going to call this side good enough. It's a little light in some areas, but it's better than it was and it's probably flatter than my mill table. Now we'll work on that side. I'm kind of glossing over a lot of this process, but it's basically just removing minute amounts of metal to get everything flat. So this side I did off the surface plate, got that flat. Same thing on this side. It's decent. There's contact the whole way around. And then I blued this up, checked this one. 
Again, contact the whole way around, did a little scraping on that. Uh, for these two pieces, it's a little trickier. I can't really print this off the surface plate. I did sort of check this off of this piece, but I can't get the whole way out. Kind of blued this up a little bit, checked here. Did a little very cursory scraping, but for what it is and my appetite for doing more scraping, I'm calling that good as is. The heads for these bolts are pretty chewed up and had these washers on them, which don't really make sense because it covers up part of the logo. Parts diagram doesn't show that either. A lot of older tools have bolts with kind of chunkier heads on them. I'm going to modify some flange head bolts to try to mimic that look. I don't know if this style of bolt is exactly correct, but I think it looks pretty good. There's a lock screw that goes in this hole, and there's a little brass slug that sits inside there that the set screw pushes against to lock the spindle. There's another hole here, and that one just had that flathead screw in it. I'm pretty sure there's supposed to be another one of these in that side. Dug around in my brass drawer, found that little scrap. This little slug is supposed to be coming in at 501 and a half, that's 502. I'm gonna call that pretty lucky. We'll get rid of that extra thousandth real quick. Now for the set screw, I know you can buy like 10 packs of, hang on a minute. That looks a little better. Um, as I was saying, I could buy a 10-pack of these from McMaster, but I couldn't find them in the right length. So, time for another flange head. Now if I just machine like that, it's going to spin that bolt back out. Do a little sacrificial jam nut on there. That back one can still free float and align with the front one there. Give that a quick shot on the wire wheel to take the rest of the yellow plating off, and I'd say that's a pretty good facsimile of a cup point set screw. After looking at some other examples of these dividing heads, I don't think it originally had the second lock screw, but I'll consider it an upgrade. The spindle really only needed a light once over with some scotch bright.
This is the little collar that slides onto the back of the spindle. Looking in there, you can see the cross hatching from this being honed to fit the spindle. Probably not something you're going to find on one of those import dividing heads. Hang on. I only received one dividing plate with this, and it's not actually one of the original Ellis dividing plates, but it has the same divisions as one of the original plates, plus 54 holes, which gets me quite a few more divisions. I did at some point in my acquisition of tools pick up some dividing head... Hang on. So as I was saying, in my travels and picking up tools, I picked up some random dividing head stuff. But unfortunately, this one has a different hole pattern and a different center hole. But I think the thing to do is to try to make an adapter plate. This one's hardened, so even if I press something in there, I wouldn't be able to necessarily drill that hole pattern in it. But these two together will get me most of the divisions I'll want to do. But I've also got a blank one that matches this, so I can go back at some point and make the ones that I'm missing. Okay, so I went digging in the scrap bin and I found that, which is going to be pretty much perfect size for this, but it's gonna be hard to hold. So I kept digging around and I found that I have an inch and an eighth arbor, which is, well, it's close enough. And I blew it. I'm gonna make another one of these and we'll come back to this. Next issue is I've got two handles and neither of them actually go to this dividing head. The original one would have been bronze and matched the sector. I don't have a big enough piece of bronze, so made up a little pattern and we'll just cast one out of some scrap. Someday I'm going to learn how to get a consistent moisture content in my sand and get it right, but today's not that day. This was my first time casting anything in bronze, and it obviously didn't go very well. It didn't quite fill before I ran out of bronze. But I have something that kind of looks like the part that I need. I'm going to go ahead and machine it and see if I can get the part out of it anyway. Well, that's exactly what I was hoping wasn't going to happen, but kind of expected. Just way too much porosity in there and it cleaned up a little too small. I think I'm going to stop there and try again. So I centered up front to back based off of the vise jaw, and as you can see it's not exactly centered, but that's not surprising. And then just visually centered up side to side.
that I've got one diameter turned straight, I'm going to flip it around and work the other end. This is one of those parts where not too many of the dimensions are critical, but I want to make sure I clean it up in an order that makes sense to maximize the amount of material used. need to figure out how all of this stacks up so we can figure out what that length is. That thread's kind of chewed up there. Now I've got it to the point where it's going to start cleaning up those threads, but now it's just screwing that screw in. I guess I should have done this before I put it together. Set the end play on the worm here with it disengaged. So when this crank is on here, it does actually need to be able to clear the sector. So basically the maximum length of this piece is that. I guess I didn't have to put that together to figure it out. Before I do that, I think I want to figure out this pin or plunger. I think I want to reuse pieces from this one. Okay, that all seems simple enough. I've got a center hole that's, for whatever reason, not centered anymore. Let's see if we can fix that. So I set the length on this thing so it'll clear over the sector. Kind of forgot it needs to clear that screw too. Now let's see about trying to make this plunger fit on here. Hang on.
There's a pin here for a direct index plate that's missing, so let's go make one. I don't have an appropriate piece of round stock for this, so I just torched a piece out of some scrap. I've been using anchor lube for a lot more than just stainless steel lately. I find that it doesn't run off the parts as much, and it doesn't smoke like normal cutting oil. So the first time I did this, I got the trig wrong on the first hole. Went back and did it properly. This time, just to make sure, I just kind of spotted each one before I actually drill and commit to it. And it looks good now. So I centered up on this pin with the indicator. It can sit at a funny angle for this because I'm just going to drill right over that pin. So I landed right back where I started, so that means I did it right, other than dragging the tool across there. I'm doing a 24 hole pattern on this, which works out to be one and two thirds turns. I'm using the 54 hole circle. So it's one turn plus 36 holes. The sector just serves as a method of counting those holes. For deburring the back side of this, I'm just going to disengage the worm. And use this pin to index it. So this plate is hitting that bolt and not going down the whole way. So I just need to... That is just about done, and I think it looks pretty good, but, but it doesn't do me a whole lot of good unless I have some way to hold work in it. All that it came with was this faceplate, which to me seems like an odd way of holding work on a dividing head. Since I usually think of the dividing head as something where you're going to be cutting gears or splines, something on a shaft. The spindle on this is an inch and three quarter by eight, which means that none of my lathe chucks are going to fit on it. The taper on the spindle is a brown and sharp number nine, which actually is the same as my mill. So I picked up some brown and sharp nine collets for it. That'll get me up to three quarters of an inch. I'll need to knock up a draw bar for this to be able to tighten it. I should mention the clicking in the background here is my power hacksaw and not a weird sound that my lathe is making. Not that my lathe doesn't make weird sounds anyway.
Well, that's one work holding solution, but that limits me to three quarters of an inch. I've got this ER40 collet chuck that I made for my lathe, but the register on it was a little bit too big, so I ended up remaking it. But I should be able to re-thread it for that. I also want to do a little spindle cap protector for that. So when I am using the collets in here, it just gives a little bit of protection from crashing a cutter into the threads. Since I'm doing the same thread twice, rather than changing out change gears twice, I'm just going to swap chucks back and forth. This ended up being a really nice fit. The little spindle protector gets the same threads and I just did a little knurl on it and cut it to length. I cut it off pretty much flush to the end of the spindle because I also have a dead center I can use in here if I'm doing something between centers, long shafts, that sort of thing. Of course, in order to use that, I need a little foot stock or tail stock. I have this one that I picked up somewhere along the line. I'm not sure what it's from, but it's not this dividing head. It's a little more than an inch low, so let's make a little spacer for that. I'll go ahead and zero the calipers on that. That is 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5. Half of 2.25. Ah. God. Well, this is one where having a slot's really not going to make any difference in how it functions, and you're not going to see it once it's assembled, so I'm just going to do that. That's going to look perfect. got this pulled up as nice and tight as I can. I had previously ground the top of this flat to the bottom of that. So what I'm going to do now is... I've got a bar here that I turned as straight as I could get it and check to make sure the spots I'm measuring are the same diameter. There I'm about minus two. there I'm about eight, so I've got 10 to go off that. Since I have a ways to go, I figured I'd clean up the top side of the block, make sure it was nice and flat, so everything would pull together nice and tight. So I am at a point where I have this very, very close. But the issue I'm having is very slight changes in the angle, throw off the result a little bit. 
I think I want to move this setup over to the mill. In order to do that, I'm going to need some keys for this. I sized this to be half an inch, which is the same as the T-slots on my mill. The ones on the dividing head are 7 sixteenths of an inch, so I'll have to make sort of a little stepped key. Oh. Those ought to work. I've got this set up in the mill and I've got my aluminum bar in the collet chuck. The footstock isn't actually touching it right now. I want to explain this just because there's some interesting stuff going on here. What I did was I found the point halfway between the high and low of the runout on this because there is some runout, but if this is high and this is low, 90 degrees from that should be the middle of it. It should be straight there. And now I just have it dialed in straight side to side and up and down. I'm on zero on this end. I'm about seven there, so let's let's take some off of this. Well, it took a few more rounds, but I think I've got this as good as I can get it. There is a little bit of fluctuation in the diameter of the bar, but the spots I'm checking I've measured with the micrometer and they're within a few tenths. I think just about the last thing to do here is finish up this adapter plate for the other indexing plate. I'm going to start with the three hole pattern. Rather than try to center this up on the spindle and then figure out the bolt pattern, I'm just going to do it this way. The shoulder there is going to interfere with the countersink for these screws. So I'm going to start with the 3 8 end mill and make clearance for that. Because these plates stack up to be a little bit thicker, this piece is bottoming out on the sector so you can't move the sector if it's tight. There's a little spring washer in there. So I just made another one that's the right depth. 
That should do the trick. Just need to make sure I pull this out a little bit more to clear that. Well, I think that about wraps this up. I'm really happy with how this came out. This thing's going to be really useful to have around the shop for doing gears and spline shafts. But since this is a hobby machining channel, let's go ahead and make something almost entirely useless with it. So I forgot to tighten the screw on the sector the first time. But that's why we practice with new tools. For some reason, I've just always wanted to make a bolt with seven sides on it. Perfect.